All right. So I finished off um, my digital painting of George Bernard Shaw, and I just wanted to then make it not just a digital painting, but into an actual print and poster. And so that that requires not just zooming in and using custom brushes and all the things we've been talking about, but it also requires uh, dealing with the background, dealing with details, finishing it off. And so I, I zoom in and I'll look at the edges and I'll see there's just some little areas that feel less finished than others. And so I'll do kind of a copy of the finishing touches layer, this layer here. I'll show you that. And then I'll just make some alterations to that as it's um, put on top, play with adjustments, kind of finish that off. But then when, when I'm happy with that, I turn off the gray background, right? And I turn off the white background and I merge it all together. So this is the refined painting, the base color, the sketch, all these different things merge together into one. Okay, but there's one thing I wanted to add, and this is to add a little bit of randomness into it. Because when you look at it with just a white background, you'll see um, how empty some things feel. Because the without the gray coming through, instead you have the white coming through, it comes through the hairline. And one kind of fun way, it's an abstraction way, to kind of mess with it and give you something to react to, is to take one of your painting layers, in this case I did the refined painting layer, and I duplicated it and shifted it over. Just in a little way, uh, certain parts of it. And you see how that kind of randomly does some things. It randomly moves some of his hair off to one side. It randomly pushes stuff into his, underneath his eye. Um, it breaks the edges. And this is kind of the advantage to me of digital. So what I did is I took all of that and I merged that together. And I'm gonna turn off the white background. Now the next thing is, what do you wanna do with the background? Do you wanna leave it gray? And I like this already but the gray is just a waste of pixels, right? So then I often like to composite something in. So in this case, this is a, a monoprint, a water-based monoprint um, that was scanned. And I put that in at a low opacity. And I liked kind of some of the, the structuring colors. Um, George Bernard Shaw is most famous for his play Pygmalion, which is what My Fair Lady is based on and about kind of the structure of society and class. The other thing I could do is I take that at merge flatten layer and I split it into half tones, right? We'll get to that though, to break it up. And then the other thing I do is I look and Google things he's written. And one thing that I found that I really liked was his signature, the G. Bernard Shaw signature. Uh, there are letters written by him, just different things. So kind of playing with this signature, maybe getting a little bit of the, the grittiness of it, vignetting it a little bit. It's starting to work. Now, if I take all of that, then I add some half tones. So let me show you what I mean. Again, the advantage of digital. Behind, in the background, behind my painting layer. Picking an emerged um, image with even the background elements in there. So it kind of brings everything together. Now, even though it's not in my painting, it's behind my painting, it will show all those little in all those little areas where the painting is thin or low opacity, where the white was coming through before. That's just the black. Let's do it with the yellow. So now the yellow is really strong in the background comes in a little bit in the hair, it kind of gets rid of that, that white hairline, punches things up a little bit, especially in the jacket. The red, 
you can play with the opacity individually and the placement and the offset of all of these and then of course the cyan and so you put all these together I still can't decide quite exactly which signature I want. That one looks pretty good. Yeah. And I have a finished poster. So that's kind of finishing off, making it from digital painting to a, what I call a full concept finish. And you see with that half tone kind of monoprint background that's very, very much based in print media kind of old world and then like his old signature it kind of brings everything together I did do a little vignetting at the very top you know that kind of white brushy uh, lightning just uh, to help focus the the attention of the viewer to the middle all right and so then it's done so I save it I can put it up as a JPEG And I can put it up on my Redbubble shop as a poster. Right. So when we view it at actual size, you really see all the different brushes and the different materials. And I was aiming for something that looked kind of like crayon and pastel on a silkscreen print. And there are a few kind of digital textures coming out, but I really love the colors and the layering and the spontaneity of it. I think that, that works well for, for this subject matter. Okay, so that's that's wrapping up George Bernard Shaw. My next, and you can see it was very different than my old Walt Whitman inspiration, or not Walt Whitman, I'm sorry, my old James Joyce inspiration. So both both Irishmen. So now let's look at an Irish Irish woman. And so for my next demo, I'll be tackling the Countess Markovitsk. And I'm never sure how to pronounce things. So my little trick now is I just learned about this. It doesn't always work, <laughs> but YouTube has all the answers. All right. Makievich. Makievich. Okay, so Constance Makievich, which is a Polish name, but she is an Irish kind of freedom fighter. Very, very uh, interesting to research. So if we look her up, and it's always good to research your subjects. You're gonna make me spell it every time. We could watch little videos about her, we could Learn about her socialism, her military, her uh, militarism, for Irish independence. Um, we can look at Wikipedia, of course. And I love these. Just a suffragette, socialist, revolutionary from the fin de siècle, the turn of the, the 18th to the 19th century. So. When looking for images, I wanted to find something that really was suggestive of her and not something that was kind of a glamour shot, which is often what you find with, with female celebrities or even historical figures. Like that's very much kind of a glamour shot. Um, but something that reveals some of her character, right? Again, we don't want to like point out anything too, we don't want to point out flaws or or make a caricature 
if we're trying to just get to the soul of this historic figure. And that's my goal. And there are later photos I found that I thought were, were just interesting and equally uh, lovely to earlier photos. But I was really drawn to this, which is obviously kind of a source photo and staged, but that she, she was in this kind of mili military uniform, which is very common for a lot of her, her photos. All right. So without further ado, something that digital artists sometimes do is colorize these old public domain photos. And that's another form of rotoscoping, except you're adding color underneath the grays of the photo as opposed to painting on top, which is true rotoscoping. So it's just, just uh, co colorizing is what it's often called. I also wanted to, to find something else from the early 20th century that kind of showed her spark and her free thinking. And there are illustrations from that time for some kind of color palette ideas. That's the softer side. There are botanical illustrations, which are lovely. There are fashion illustrations. But then there's also this guy, Hans Hoffmann, who was um, a very important artist in art history because he was such a, an important instructor to the abstract expressionist through the School of Visual Arts in New York. Um, after World War II broke out and all of these European intellectuals, including Hans Hoffmann, left Germany and Europe and came to America, their ideas were welcomed, especially in New York, and they became very influential to American modernism. And then, of course, you can see how uh, art historical artists have represented them. So this is by actually a sketch by John Butler Yeats, who's a poet. A beautiful sketch, though. So very gestural. So all these influences are going to kind of come together to inform what I do. I'm, I'm hoping for kind of a watercolor effect. So I'm going to be looking at textures and, and taking colors from some of those influences. And let me see. So what's the first thing I want to do? Well, I want to go to my pencil sketch, just like I did with George Bernard Shaw. I'm going to open that up in Photoshop. Right. And then, just like I did with George Bernard Shaw, she looks a little sad and forlorn here. Her, her shoulders are very narrow. And what I might want to do instead is kind of map it on the reality a bit. Use the advantage of digital. So take this large public domain high resolution resource. Line it up. Transform it to size. And I'm getting pretty good with my sketches. <laughs> it's my freehand sketches are not too too off. And I want to keep the energy of it. But I can see, yeah, the shoulders are, are very different. I made her neck actually thicker than it is in the photo, which I actually don't mind. And I gave her hat a little bit more flair. Um, but I will... Play with her eyes a little bit. All right, so using this photo, I'm going to make a duplicate of my sketch, take its opacity down, put the photo back up to 100%, and I'm going to warp it. So Command T, oh, can't warp the smart object. Instead, I'm going to warp my sketch. Command T, right click, warp. And first, the focal point, of course, is the eyes. Don't want them to be quite so downturned. So I'm going to reverse that bow. When you're pinching it, I always think of it like rolling dough. 